How's it going everyone? College Lefty and in this video I'm going to be ranking some of the finest cards that we have in set 1 and set 2 in MLB The Show 19. There is a recent flashback finest card that has been released into the game. Now that uh, Javier Baez is the cover athlete, I'll talk a little bit about a way you can unlock a brand new 99 overall Javier Baez. But before I get into that and a little bit more about the pre-order details, Javier Baez is the cover athlete for next year's game. I think that this is amazing to see. MLB The Show tweeted this out this morning. And uh, I think that this is a great marketable player that is well known throughout uh, Major League Baseball. So. To, go, to enhance this screenshot just a little bit, you will be able to get an anniversary edition. This is a physical copy that includes a hat and some things listed. I will also have a link to this posted. It's I retweeted this out on my Twitter. I'll have a link to that post. But uh, Digital Deluxe Edition gives you early access as well. MVP Edition gives you early access. And then if you look at the bottom there, it talks a little bit about uh, pre-ordering the game through the PlayStation Store, earning a Javier Baez flashback card for MLB The Show 19, and 5,000 stubs for MLB The Show 20. This is indeed the flashback finest version. If you notice, uh, it doesn't really say fan vote. It doesn't say uh, select at the bottom. It just says MLB The Show 19 finest. I was kind of hesitant to tweet this out because I didn't know if that was a brand new card. But anyway, he will be included in the rankings in this one. I didn't really start by uh, with a number system. System. I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about each card and their value. I think that this Matthew Boyd is the least valuable finest card, even though he is a lefty. He still has some value to him, but I think that there are a lot of better cards, a lot better cards in this finest collection or in this finest program already. We will have set three released uh, pretty soon here within the next week or so. But I think that Daniel Vogelbach is probably the worst finest hitter in terms of value uh, there are a lot of other first basemen you can go with it's still a very good card don't get me wrong a lot of these cards are still really amazing they compete with signature cards but i think that there's some extra value to some of these other ones rather than some of the ones at the beginning i think this trey mancini is amazing i think that uh, he's a better pinch hitter a better bench bat so i included him uh, towards the beginning of the rankings same type of thing with this brian anderson i think that it adds value that he plays a multiple secondary positions, but the fact that we have uh, third basemans uh, that are pretty good throughout the game at, at uh, different tiers in cards, signature series, uh, flashbacks, other versions, and uh, I think even live series cards can compete with someone like that. Mike Yastrzemski is somebody who I think is really good. I think all these finest cards are good. I just really want to clarify that and uh, before before talking a little bit about these cards. They, you can really uh, bring up valid points where all of them have extra value and could be a little bit better than others. It's really personal preference uh, for which cards you like to use as well as uh, which cards you, you're lacking at the position already. So which players you would like to upgrade, stuff like that. I think Shohei Otani is a very good card. I think he has a very nice swing in the game. I think that he's pretty valuable. But uh, with some other outfielders that we have, once again, uh, the fielding isn't quite there. The power versus lefties isn't isn't uh, all the way up like some of these other cards. Uh, Tim Anderson is a really good one. He also has another version in the game, but he is a very good contact hitter. 125, 122 is uh, is pretty elite with mid 70s power. Kind of reminds me of a Rod Carew at shortstop with that speed, but he doesn't have the fielding. Good vision, but he doesn't have the fielding. He can play multiple positions, but he will be a liability out there for you in the infield. Uh, Jorge Soler. I thought about uh, having him. A little bit below some of these other cards but I think because of the power uh, it just adds some extra value to him he has a little bit of increased vision this card has a really glitchy swing and is a pretty good card in the game I know a lot of people like his silver version that's a battle royale beast for them so Jeff McNeil I think is right in the same category a really good lefty with also a pretty good glitchy swing and uh, has a little bit more power versus righties on this card, but even his other silver is really good. I think that uh, all these cards have value. Like I said earlier, this one plays multiple positions with a little bit better fielding and is also a lefty bat, so you have to keep that in mind. You don't really find too many infielders that can play uh, or that have a left-handed bat, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Danny Santana is a good utility player that doesn't really have the fielding, but he is a switch hitter, so I think that that adds a little bit of extra value to him. Uh, I wouldn't really necessarily use this card in the field, though, because I, I like guys that have good defense and good hitting stats as well. Mitch Garver, I think, is one of the best, finest cards in this entire bunch because he does play catcher. He also has a secondary at first base, but because his hitting stats are so good, I think that this is the best budget catcher that you can get in MLB The Show 19. For 
Uh, this late in the game cycle with all the cards that are out right now, I think that that 95 Mitch Garver is probably the way to go if you don't have a signature series card or your creative player. But Bo Bichette is another one. I know a lot of people like using this dude. His swing is pretty good in the game. I struggle using him a little bit more uh, just because of his swing type, but I know a lot of people like his swing. And this card has a lot of value, great speed. He can play shortstop, which is a position that is pretty tough to fill unless you're willing to use a more of a budget player if you don't have Honus Wagner, guys like that, Troy Tulowitzki. But uh, anyway, Chris Bryant, I think, is, uh, is really good. I think he could have been lower as well simply because he plays uh, third base. Uh, first base and outfield, I think, adds a little bit of value. I know a lot of people like using Chris Bryant's swing. Even the live series is really good. I think this Glaber Torres is a little bit has a little bit more value simply because he plays second base. Uh, 109, 102 power for a second baseman is is really nice. He has the most power I think in the entire game, unless uh, Javier no Javier Baez has a little bit less. So I think that on average he has the most power for a second baseman. Uh, maybe this Max Muncie as well. So these two cards back to back here, one righty, one lefty. I know that this Max Muncie also has an All Star version. So, I mean, some really good power hitters at the second base position are being released now. I think that that adds extra value. We see some signature series second basemen that still don't even have close to this amount of power. But uh, Rafael Devers is another one. Could be even lower than uh, some of the second basemen like Glaber. But because this card has really good stats against righties and still even pretty good splits against lefties, I figured that this card has a lot of value. 110 vision with 122 clutch, a little bit better fielding than some of the other cards, and still 57 speed is pretty decent. I think that this Ozzy Albies has some value simply because he's a switch hitter. This is a 98 overall second baseman. Might as well be a signature series card and uh, has gold fielding at second base. He will have silver fielding at shortstop with 80 speed. That's still really good, and for the price, I think you can't go wrong with this guy. Uh, his Stats against righties are a little bit on the lower end, but against lefties, he's still really usable. I think uh, some of the better second or third basemen in the game, I think this card would also play really good at second base, and I would consider using him there simply because of the power, and he would also have silver fielding. But uh, Anthony Rendon, I don't know if he's the best third baseman, even though he's a 99 overall. I still think that there is one better uh, third baseman, and that's Matt Chapman, I think this card, because of his elite fielding, still has the power, even though he has a little bit lower contact. I think that he's a little bit better than Rendon, but Rendon has a little bit of a better swing in the game. At least that's my personal preference. That's my opinion. Uh, let me know what you guys think so far for some of these rankings. If you would have some guys swapped around, where you would have some guys listed. I know I don't have a number system, but uh, you can see in which way I've kind of put these guys in order. I think you have to include Bryce Harper near the top because... Uh, I mean, he has the reverse splits, which I think adds extra value because a guy that a lefty that can hit lefties even better uh, is is valuable. A lot of people will play that lefty lefty matchup, and if you can hit lefty lefty, he's usable. And of course, this Javier Baez is uh, probably the best card in general. I have a couple cards that are listed a bit higher than him, simply because I think that they could be. Uh, you could argue that they have extra value, but because this card is free. For simply pre-ordering the game through the PlayStation Store, I think that I mean he has to be at the top of the list. A shortstop that also plays second base, third base, and center field. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, JT Romuto has to be at the top of the list. A diamond, uh, pretty much a diamond for both sides of the of the ball. I mean hitting and defense. He's gonna play uh, with gold fielding out there, but the 95 arm strength should be pretty good. He's 6'1", so he's a little bit taller than Pudge. Might be able to have a little bit better blocking. But uh, one of the best cards, if not the best one, is also this Kirby Yates. By collecting uh, seven of these cards, you get this Kirby Yates. By collecting 14, you get the JT Real Muto. And I will have the screenshot here at the end. But simply because it is very tough to get a 99 relief pitcher, I think this card adds extra value for your squad. I have faced him when I played against Yayo, and he was really tough to... To face I only face him for one inning and I thought that he was pretty good but uh, basically at this screenshot right here you can see that you can collect uh, 7 and 14 for these two cards there will be other sets released I believe set 3 and set 4 are coming soon uh, if not uh, I think I think that there's gonna be four sets I mean they said that there's gonna be over 40 of these players as well as some cards that they haven't even revealed yet but uh, some of the voting has been taking place and some of the voting uh, voting reveals that is have been going on and I believe Josh Bell's expected to get a card guys like that that they've kind of revealed on Twitter so be on the lookout for that uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and let me know what you guys think about my rankings I would probably go with uh, Javier Baez 
and Kirby Yates as my number two, one and two choices for these cards. But anyway, I hope, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I'm College Lefty, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.